How do you feel about Cook your quarterback, for Mike? Kirk, for Kirk Cousins. <laughs> he loves him. He loves him not. He's played well. He's he played has. well. He really it was has. all that ugliness during training camp about the vaccination position, and he missed five days because of close contact with Kellen Mond, who tested positive and isn't vaccinated, and that was all kind of a mess. And, you know, that continues to hover, and we see it in yeah. pockets. Yeah. It hasn't been widespread, fortunately, but we see it in pockets and hasn't happened to a quarterback yet, but it still could. could happen any day because you, you're tested every day if you're not vaccinated. But Cousins has been extremely good. Big matchup this weekend as the Browns go to Minnesota to try uh, to get to 3-1. and one. The Vikings try to get to 2-2. Two and two. Let's do our matchups draft for week four. Chris, I'll give you the first pick. All right. Well, um, mm, last I've heard, there's this game in New England. I mean, I'm going to go with, you know, low-hanging fruit here. I mean, yeah, Belichick versus Brady, of course. Yeah, I want to see what Bill Belichick has in store for the Tampa, you know, Tampa offense. What, you know, Arians left which does. You know, can can he play with Brady's mind a little bit and go, you know, you talked about like, you know, I would think they're going to have to change some of their signals and checks to a degree. Maybe they'll say some things that were old checks that mean something new. I think that's kind of something I'm looking forward to, to see if maybe they catch Brady by surprise with a few things here and there. So that's certainly the matchup of the week for me. That one should have been removed from the pool this I know. week. That one's a given. That's the one we talk about all week long. Brady and Belichick together again. Who has the advantage? Is it Brady because of how well he knows Belichick? Is it Belichick because of how well he knows Brady? But obviously, we should just rename it the Brady-Belichick matchup draft every week because this is the ultimate. Uh, for me, I, I, I'm i going to go with Dak Prescott against that Panthers defense. Yeah. Because Prescott has been as good as any quarterback in the NFL so far this season. The Panthers' defense has been as good as any in the NFL so far this season, even though they haven't gotten the proper praise for it. Something's got to give. Can Prescott continue his mastery of whatever defenses have been in front of him? I think he can, but I think it's a real test. And and uh, you, you want to stay two-dimensional. You want to have balance from Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard in the run game. So – Dak isn't throwing it 58 times, but I want to see what he can do against that defense. Yeah, I'm with you. That was definitely one I had written down as well. Uh, that, that's a that's a special showdown. That Panthers defense is real, and yeah, like you said, the Prescott and their offense is real too in, in all categories. So good one, um, man. I'm gonna go to Stefanski versus Zimmer. Uh, I, that to me is kind of like uh, kind of a cool matchup. I mean, yeah, it's it's old offensive coordinator Stefanski going against you know the guy that you know was was his boss, his, the head coach. I want to see what Zimmer can do to slow down that Browns run game. I mean, the Browns are special running the ball, like we know. They got Bill Callahan as the offensive line coach. He's as good as it gets. But I also like I don't know, Mike, and maybe maybe you know better than me. I just got the feel at the end of the Stefanski era in Minnesota that like Zimmer was sick of him or had enough or. I don't know. I just got that sense. I could be totally wrong. I have no inside info there, but I think that adds to the matchup too. Stefanski was with the Vikings from 2006. He arrived when Brad Childress was hired as the head coach. He survived through 2019. That in and of itself is amazing. amazing. With all the coaching changes they had, all the ups and downs and highs and lows, he never got fired. He always Rose and he became the offensive coordinator and did well enough that he became the coach of the Cleveland Browns. I, I, Stefanski, I think very diplomatic and tactful would never say what he really thinks, but I'm sure he would love nothing more than to go back there and beat the Vikings. It's not going to be an easy one. Uh, and uh, I'm struggling with who I'm going to pick in that one. Chris, we'll do our mega picks podcast later this morning where we have to make our pick. That one is the toughest one of the me- week for me. How about Andy Reid versus the bro coach, Nick Sirianni. Yeah. Back, I, I mean, re, re, really, it's – and I, I like Sirianni. I do. But how different could two coaches ever be than Andy Reid and Nick Sirianni? Mm-hmm. I, really. I, both likable in their own way, but two completely different styles. And you got Reid going back to Philly. We mentioned that earlier in the show, only for the second time since he was fired by the team. That that's a hell of a matchup, and the Eagles starting to inch toward desperation, but the Chiefs are too. They are. And they're both one and two. I that's know. what's stunning about this. It is. It's it's uh, definitely. I mean, there's there's a lot of dynamics to this game, and and you know one of the things I wrote down, Mike, was actually the Chiefs versus themselves, just because like they've just hey, it's 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 you guys stop messing it up. I mean, are, you, are we gonna mess it up again this week in a big situation? You know, I don't know, but, you know, history tells us, like you've said many times, this is a week where 
the Chiefs all of a sudden things get tight again and they buckle down and get the focus like you've talked about and you know we might see the best version of them and and I I don't know why and it's forty one to ten and yeah. it's a blowout and you don't have to worry about what happens late in the game because it's over by then I that, I mean so. I I certainly could see it going that way I I do all right round three Chris who do you have well I'm gonna go Kyler Murray versus the Rams front. Um, because, and I say that because the Rams have had answers for the, the Cardinals, the, you know, in the Kyler Murray era and Kyler Murray, if you look back at it, has not been able to run or scramble at all against this defense. You know, they, they were built to stop Russell Wilson, the Rams defense and just, you know, oh, we've got Kyler Murray now. It's perfect. We can stop him too. But Floyd Donald, Aaron Donald has said that. Right. Aaron Donald has said that. They he has no, that. You know, it's not the same challenge. Yes. Yeah. Because they're used to chasing around Russell Wilson. Right. So I mean, they they have. So Kyler, I, I will look at Kyler Murray as like he he's got to he's got to make a few plays in this game off schedule or show some of the similar magic he'd be seeing a week in week out ba- basis uh, from him. I've got two I can go with. I'm going to start with the Packers defensive line against the Steelers offensive line because if that offensive line in Pittsburgh does not start playing better soon, it is going to be over for Ben Roethlisberger. Ed Bouchette had a great item yesterday in The Athletic about the similarities between Roethlisberger and Y.A. Tittle in 1964 and that iconic photo of that battered and broken and bloodied Y.A. Tittle happened after week two in Pittsburgh. In 1964 at Pitt Stadium, so they better they better step up with that offensive line, Chris, or or it's going to be over soon. Yeah, definitely. Offensive line's got to, and then he's got to step up and just be smarter with the ball, and sometimes yeah. holding the ball too long. You know, again, I think last one, last one. Yeah, I got one more. We okay, got we're almost off it. the air. Do it, but it's Jared Goff versus the elements because the tiny little. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you weren't going to say it. I thought you said it enough last night. I I'm didn't BFT say PM. it. I did it last night. I'm not doing it today. <laughs> See you See ya. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.